Hi, everybody. This is a special event, um, a kind of a joint venture between Joe Broner's Small Cap Investor Video Talk, um, my newsletter StockTelegraph.com TV, and my international or the international edition of StockTelegraph.com. And as a guest today, we have um, Catalin from – Catalin, I'm sorry, I can never pronounce your last name. If, can you help me out? No problem. It's, uh, it's Kilofliski, Catalin Kilofliski. No, so no wonder it's a difficult one. Right, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I know you for years, no but I never made it. I never made it. Anyways, no um, so we have a joint venture on the newsletter side, um, and there's kind of a transaction going on between Santa Fe Gold and Canark, and this is why I have asked Catalin to give us some insight, because I read the news releases, and I partly listened to the... Um, to the conference call which you guys hosted, uh, still it was very, very complicated. So um, I would like you to start to give us maybe some background on yourself um, and sure. then and then talk, tell us about the transaction. Um, my main contact to, to you was with Canark, yeah, and you were looking for uh, to acquire some projects for quite some time. Yeah, you had some projects which you investigated, but you ended up now with a transaction with Santa Fe Gold. So the stage is yours right now. Thank you so much, uh, Michael, and thank you so much, Joe. Uh, it's a pleasure to, to be part of your show here, and a pleasure to provide an update to investors uh, throughout the world that uh, you subscribe to your newsletter. Uh, let me start with the beginning. I think it's very important to, to give uh, people an idea of uh, who's really behind the company and uh, why are we doing this and uh, how are we going to benefit our shareholders. So. The, uh, the beginning is really um, uh, starting with um, a gentleman called Bradford Cook, who is, who is also the founder and the chairman of uh, Canag Resource, but also the founder and CEO of Endeavor Silver. And I mention Endeavor Silver because Endeavor is really a very successful company. Uh, it's a company that was started by Brad 10 years ago from really nothing uh, and achieved uh, tremendous success. Uh, you know, their market cap today, just for people that, that are listening, it's in the range of six to seven hundred million dollars and not long ago they were a billion dollar company. And that's impressive because it's a company that's founded ten years ago by Brad Cook and two other gentlemen with an idea uh, and a lot of experience in their pocket. And their business model was very simple. Um, they wanted to look for opportunities in the mining space uh, where they felt that there is significant upside potential and they want to bring their expertise and money to the table to get things turned around. And uh, Canark was, you know, Bradford's first company founded about 20 years ago with the mm. goal to advance a gold project from discovery to production. But 10 years ago, Brad decided to, uh, along with Canard, to fund Endeavor Silver, and the timing of that was very similar to the, what we are seeing today in the mining space. We were coming off a very sustained lows, um, more than two years lows in the mining space, and with that, a lot of opportunities became available. And that's how uh, Endeavor was started. It was started from acquiring a project that had no resources but a mill in place, they are still mining there today. They've increased capacity many, many times, and they've added two more projects in the meantime. So that's really uh, the, his uh, business model. And it's important to remember that because Canark, basically effective January of this year, has publicly said that wants to repeat the Endeavor business model. So in other words, Canar has become a very active suitor for projects that have that potential. And we looked around the market, and uh, Santa Fe Gold actually was the first company that Canark identified. Uh, and we wanted oh. to do a transaction with them early in February of 2014. But then the company just announced another uh, a transaction with Thai Gold. Um, unfortunately, we moved away and moved to pursue another transaction in Mexico instead. But uh, by the time we dropped the transaction in Mexico, and we did drop it because of the significant due diligence that was done, and, uh, you know, things got from bad to worse, so we, we basically decided to walk away. But the timing of us walking away was good because Santa Fe just dropped the other uh, transaction that they were doing with Thai Gold, 
uh, because Tai right. could not raise the money, so Santa Fe had to drop the transaction. So we immediately uh, convened discussion with Santa Fe Gold. Now, looking at the transaction that we structured, it's very interesting to understand uh, why why we did what we did. Santa Fe Gold um, has very very good assets, uh, a very high grade gold and silver mine fully permitted and built in U.S. in the state of New Mexico, a fully built, built in permitted mill, and it operated up until November 2013. And the company, you know, never been able to achieve production, never be able to achieve targets due to a uh, number of issues, mainly to do with the management of the company and the way they've done business. And in that okay. process, <laughs> while they've done that, they've actually built a lot of losses uh, for the company. Uh, you know, the company has recorded losses of, of in excess of $80 million. And, you know, when you start to do things uh, and turn them around, that become an asset because what it tells you is that, that you can actually have tax-free, uh, call it tax-free income for the next $80 million because you can offset okay. against those losses. So. It's important to know that because Canark initially wanted to do 100% acquisition of Santa Fe, which would mean, you know, take the whole upside of the company, bring it into Canark, bring on the management team and, and turn things around. Um, and we started our discussions, but in the U.S., if you do that, you basically lose the, the right to utilize those losses going mm -hmm. forward. So, okay. you know, if we were going to do 100% acquisition, we went up with the assets, but uh, we would have to pay taxes for, for every profit that we generate. So we moved the discussions from 100% acquisition to a 49% acquisition, whereby we still appoint our management team, we still appoint us to the board level, and we basically are responsible to turn around the company. And the, pro the number that we ended up with was 34%, because there is a three-year look back. So you have to look three, ah, three years okay. back and, and sum all those uh, equities they've done. And yeah. then, uh, let me ask you, a, let me ask you a couple of questions, yes. uh, Catalin. So um, Santa Fe is a U.S. company, so it's listed on the OTC Correct. exchange? Okay, good. Correct. And um, since, since when are you uh, heading Canark? How long are you? So I Yes, uh, let me let me answer that question, uh, Michael. So I have been appointed the the CEO of Canard Resources in January of 2014, and the reason for my appointment right. was very simply to really bring new blood and new energy into Canard to accomplish this plan of of turning around the company and following up the Endeavor business model. Brad Cook, who was the CEO of Canard Resources, okay. became the chairman of the company uh, in January, and I worked closely with him uh, to to uh, basically fulfill this commitment to to repeat the Endeavor business model. Okay. Uh, Canard, for those that um, that know, uh, it's basically even sharing the same offices with Brad Cook and the Endeavor team, so we have a lot of synergies here. Uh, through the transaction with Santa Fe, I have also been appointed as president and CEO of Santa Fe Gold. And, you know, the goal there right. is very simple. We really want to make sure that we have full control and we can turn around the situation. Because really, any any yeah. upside in Santa Fe Gold <coughs> will have a direct impact on Canark resources through our one third percent ownership. Um, and that's significant because Canark today is just an exploration company. Post this transaction, right. Canar most likely will be able to consolidate on its balance sheet its one third interest in Santa Fe. In other words, it's basically able to bring in the assets and the revenues and all the things that belong to Canar through the one third percent ownership because we have effective control of the company. So, you know, okay. the market does not realize that today because transaction still needs to close and we are in the process of closing it. But as soon as the transaction closes, uh, the the re revaluation in the Santa Fe stock should in turn reflect in the revaluation of the Canark shares. Yeah. Um, do you have any timeline when you expect the closing to happen? That would be my first question. And the second question is, you, you mentioned some, let's say, some problems with the old Santa Fe management in the past. Sure. So um, can you go into details? And um, is there still some of the old management left with Santa Fe? And if so, what's the reason that they're still on board when they couldn't make sure. the company work? Yeah. Absolutely. Look, uh, the transaction has been announced um, on July the 15th, uh, so about, call it, three weeks ago. It's a very simple transaction. It's basically a share exchange. Uh, you know, Canark shares are being exchanged in exchange of Santa Fe shares. Very clean, straightforward transaction. 
The only thing that's subject to is the financing. Uh, Santa Fe Gold right now uh, is in the process of completing a $22 million gold bond for four years. That's critical because that's the only way that the company could move forward. So the only condition to closing is the financing. We expect that the financing should close before the end of September. We have engaged okay. a group out of U.S. called Europe Pacific Capital. Uh, it's a group uh, funded and, and led by Peter Schiff, who is a... Uh, Probably people know Peter Schiff. He's a very well sp um, spoken. He's invited at all the shows in the in the financing world. A big bull on gold. Uh, has wrote a number of books, bestsellers. So he's the leader of of um, Euro Pacific Capital. We have engaged that group to to do the financing for Santa Fe. And just as a side note, we do have good success with the Euro Pacific from the past, both through Endeavor and Color. So there is a relationship already in place. So that's the, that's the only thing that's subject to right now. Now, talking okay. about the, 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 the old Santa Fe, I think it's a good question. What did, what did go wrong and how we are going to turn it around? So, first of all, uh, from our perspective, uh, as soon as we, we dive into the due diligence, it was very obvious the reasons why it failed, you know, and mainly, mainly to do with very poor execution. The company was led by, um, by a president and CEO who had absolutely no mining operating experience, uh, therefore, um, they've tried to, to start over the mine with their own people, their own, their own equipment, and they failed big times in that process. They bought, just an example, second-hand junk equipment, never been able to perform. The, in the last okay. year alone, the turnover rate was more than 400%. They've never been able to achieve targets. They've never been able to achieve sustainable production levels, and as a result, they went from debt to more debt to a lot of debt to the point when in November 2013 they had to shut down the operation. Uh, the president and CEO of the Santa Fe Gold has been terminated uh, by, the, by the board of the company before we announced the transaction. Um, okay. From the previous management team, uh, the only person that we kept um, is really uh, the person that's a technical person. Uh, his name is John White. He is the director of technical services. He was under the direct supervision of our new chief operating officer of Santa Fe Gold, who is Gary Biles. Um, and uh, he is actually a very good resource to have, uh, very knowledgeable, but unfortunately was not um, able to work under the right leadership before. So uh, going forward for Santa Fe, though, we are in the process of hiring a new general manager of the company uh, that is okay. going to report directly to Gary Biles and myself. And then with that, a whole new um, team there at Santa Fe Gold. Um, there is a, a lot different, uh, probably everything is different than, than what uh, used to be at Santa Fe in our restart plans. Um, and I can go into a little bit more details if you want. But uh, we yeah. really looked at the Santa Fe Gold <coughs> from grounds up. Uh, and starting from that is really redoing the resource model. Because in the mining space, you can fix if you know how to management issues, people issues, operational issues, but you can fix res you cannot fix resources, right? That's so right. Yeah. The, the first thing that we really needed comfort with was the existing resource, and that's the first thing actually we commissioned. Uh, we have announced about 10 days ago a new resource model, which not only confirmed the, the, the mine life that's left there, but also increased the mine life by an additional one year. So we are very okay. confident in both the existing resource model, but also the upside in the whole district that's still really significant. Um, and that's another um, very important element that uh, was very attractive for us for Santa Fe Gold. Okay. okay. Um, okay. 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 Can I ask a question? Are these sure. real, real f uh, pictures from, from the mine? This yes. one and, and this one. So that's so there is a lot of equipment there. Uh, what you can use, uh, Joe. That's partially true because um, those are ab absolutely indeed uh, actual pictures from the mine, from underground. And the second picture is actually from inside the mill. And let me talk a little bit more about the assets here. Um, the the mill actually it's let me start with the mill. The mill is essentially brand new. Uh, it was built in 2011. Uh, it's state-of-the-art mill, fully computerized, everything is automated, it's a 400 tons a day operation, uh, but unfortunately never been able to sustain continuous production because the mine has, has always uh, not performed. Um, <coughs> And the reason for not performing is, you know, primarily uh, they have tried to do the mining themselves. So they bought equipment. The equipment failed. The equipment was not in good shape. 
and they've also tried to run the mine with their own miners and they didn't know how to do that so people were always leaving and a huge turn turnover uh, going forward though uh, to avoid those problems we are planning to use a mining contractor for this operation and there are significant okay. benefits of going that route first of all mining contractors bring their own people their own equipment and they are paid based on the tons they pull out of the mine so if they are directly incentivized to have everything running smoothly because they only get paid from what gets out of the mine. So we are going to basically do it completely different. Uh, we don't need the equipment and the paper risk. Mm -hmm. What we are going to be doing though, we are going to be hiring our own people on top of the mining contractors just to make sure that they are on top of things. And um, as a side note, Gary Bass, who uh, has basically more than 38 years of mine operating experience as general manager, mostly for underground gold and silver mines, has always worked with mining contractors during his career, so he knows how to keep them in tune. Uh, because, you know, there are stories uh, in the mining space of mining contractors uh, not performing well. So we, we are, um, uh, we have re-engineered the whole mining plan here to use mining contractors, which would reduce significantly the risk associated with running your own people and equipment. Okay. Um, um, just okay. quickly, Joe, Joe, I'm not on Skype just for your information yep. because I saw that you dropped me some, some messages uh, but I can't read them um, and Kathleen before we should probably m should move forward in the presentation there's one more yes. question from my side um, who made like the final decision to work together with Santa Fe was that you or was that Brad or of course it's always a team approach right yeah. but like Absolutely. there's always one guy who's came okay let's do it who was that yeah. Look, uh, I think it was definitely a team approach. Uh, you know, Brad uh, was a, absolutely the leader in that decision. Uh, in his role as both the chairman of, of Kalak Resources, who is the initiator, but more importantly, <coughs> and this is really important for people to know, Brad Cook became the chairman of Santa Fe Gold Effective July 15. So he actually put his name on the line here, and uh, he is now the effective de facto leader uh, at the board level of Santa Fe Gold. So if you want to get one name, you probably have a good guess with Brad Cook, but it's a team effort. Uh, Brad is working of together course. with myself and the whole team here to make things happen, and uh, uh, I think okay. uh, it's uh, really important to know that. Yeah, sure. So this is the... the, the Safe Haber statements, we have to put that into the presentation. Um, you have to make up your own mind. Yeah, we are all not brokers, so make up your own mind before you buy or sell any shares. Okay, um, if there's parts on this presentation that uh, you already covered in the introduction, then we can just go um, to sure. the next slide, but, but it's up um, to you. Uh, yeah, but, yeah. but I have one question, and, and this is maybe also working. So um, when every running Smoothly, you can produce 25 to 30,000 ounces of gold. This is yes, correct, correct. What, what you're writing here. So, and the second question is, you coming up and say, okay, you make a new resource uh, calculation in, in July. Um, yes. Is, is there any room for uh, exploration so that maybe it's going much sure. bigger than, than you, yep. you have in... Absolutely. In, in yeah. Let me, yeah, let me ask you, uh, let me answer that question because I think it's an important point that we have probably not covered at the beginning. Uh, in order for, uh, you know, you mentioned who was the one person that really liked the project and I s said, you know, probably to a large extent is Brad Cook. And for Brad to get <coughs> excited and for, for him to be able to repeat the success with Endeavor, you need more than a strong project. You need a lot of upside potential, right? Uh, because, you know, uh, you can have, have a good start with a good project, but then how do you grow from there? And really, I think uh, beyond the existing structure, which is the project, the mine, and the mill, the most attractive uh, element of Santa Fe Gold to us was the upside potential. And the reason for saying that is that the summit mine itself is located in the middle of a whole mining district. There is a lot of, uh, of uh, historical mining all over and around the property. We do have a significant Santa Fe has a significant land holdings already, and there is significant potential that we've already identified. So, um, you know, the way that we look at Santa Fe Gold is really a very solid start, but a, a, a continuous growth uh, as we as we move forward with production. 
Uh, part of our restart plan for Santa Fe Gold is not only to restart production, but as soon as we've done that, we are restarting exploration. Uh, with this, those two things will go hand in hand for us, and we have already identified very high, um, uh, pro and very prolific targets for expansion, both at the Summit Mine, which basically sits on a whole district of, of historic mining, uh, and also the Lordsburg Mill sits on a, on a historic uh, district itself. So. Um, we are very excited for the potential that uh, that the properties surrounding the mine present, and that's really what I think we would see as as a company maker, because the goal is here to restart production, but also grow from that point. And there is significant um, upside potential both on the exploration side, but also on the mill side. The mill is sitting on a on a very large uh, property that we own 100%, and there is. Uh, the excess capacity easily available there uh, with very little investment that we can expand the capacity of the mill. So uh, I think we are strategically located uh, both from a, from a mill perspective and also from upside potential for the exploration. Okay. Uh, how much coal we are going to produce? Well, um, we expect uh, that uh, as soon as we start production and uh, if you want to know how soon we can start production, we have a plan in place right now that within two months of uh, closing the financing we will start mining. And uh, that's a very aggressive plan, uh, but it's also a very realistic plan because we already have the mining contractor on standby and all the mining restart plan is done, all the engineering has been completed, so it allows us to immediately start production. From that point on, within six months, we expect to be at full capacity, which is about 400 tons a day. Uh, that's not a big number, uh, 400 tons a day uh, for those people that uh, want to put it in perspective. If you operate on a 24-hour basis, because both the mine and the mill will operate 24-7, it's roughly, call it, 20 truck loads within uh, 24 hours that go out of the mine. So every hour uh, you get one truck of ore out of the mine. And that's, that's a big operation. What really makes a big difference is the grade. It's a very high-grade gold and silver uh, mine, about 8.5 ounces of, um, of silver per ounce and about 0.13 gold, which in grams... Uh, if you want to put it in grams, about 300 grams of uh, silver and about, call it, 5 grams of gold. So uh, that's really what, what uh, makes it very attractive. And also it allows us to keep a low cost produ of production. Uh, we have estimated that uh, our cash cost of production is about five to $600 an ounce. Uh, and I dare you to compare that with, uh, with a lot of other mining um, operations, especially in gold, uh, to find a low run. It's well, probably going to be one of the lowest cash cost producers. All the in cost, which includes everything, you know, the debt resurfacing, the GNA, or everything, it's about eight to nine hundred dollar an ounce. So what that tells you is that if gold is net nine hundred dollars, we are breaking even. Uh, so it's a very uh, attractive and very highly leveraged to the gold um, uh, gold prices. Kathleen, one question: uh, You told us before, okay, uh, that the reason you don't take over the company is uh, the, the the loss what the company have and you can exactly uh, use this uh, um, in in the future how how is really the uh, the balance sheet structure how many debt has the company itself on it sure. or was this all yeah. equity what the company put in in the past and now is debt free nearly debt free and you the only reason why you cannot do it is that they cannot handle the, the production yeah no, that's a very good point, uh, Joe, and I think it's important for people to know that. So Santa Fe, <laughs> beyond having very good assets, the company, uh, before we started this transaction, was in a big hole financially. You know, mm -hmm. The amount of debts that the company has uh, before the transaction uh, it's in excess of $30 plus million dollars, and a lot of money required to restart. So it was a very tough proposition call it right so you are looking at a company that has more than 30 plus million dollars in debt and you need another 14 or so to restart so how can you tackle uh, such a big uh, such a big challenge so from our perspective uh, we looked at this uh, two ways you know we first looked at the resource and looked is the resource solid can we count on it the answer was yes but second we said okay how can we restructure this debt because at these levels, it's just not going to work. So there are two main uh, senior secure creditors. Uh, one of them is Waterton, um, and mm -hmm. the other one is Sandstorm, Sandstorm Gold. And mm -hmm. the company um, was owing to uh, Waterton about $11 million. 
and mm -hmm. Sandstorm was sitting on about seven million dollar of debt owed to them, plus another seven million dollar in future NSR. So, total of fourteen million dollars plus the eleven is twenty five, and and there were another five to seven million dollars owed to various other creditors. So that's you know over thirty million dollars. So we've spent about two months to renegotiate uh, very drastically with the creditors. And uh, we have been able to achieve significant, significant concessions from those numbers. And that's what allows us to, to really have a very profitable mine. And I can give you a quick rundown of, of those. Um, um, let me run to a slide here that shows uh, that uh, um, the situation because it's very important. Uh, this is just showing, uh, you know, what are we going to uh, do with the money we are raising, but it's, it comes in context. So uh, I'm going to start with the fact that we have announced a $22 million gold bond fund, and, uh, you know, this is how we spent the money, and when, uh, once I present this, I'll also touch base on how much we have actually cut back from what the, the company was owing before. Uh, so when, once we get the $22 million, about $6 million are required to, uh, as CAPEX for restart, which is equipment and small things that needs to be fixed. We are budgeting another $6 million as working capital for the first six months because, you know, you start uh, and you ramp up, so you need to support the operation. Uh, another $2 million will be as a healthy contingency. And $3 million uh, will go to Waterton. And uh, it's important to, to understand how, how significant of a cut we had here. Uh, Sandafe was owing to Waterton $11 million. Waterton has agreed uh, that in exchange of $3 million upfront payment to cut it from, nine, from 11 to $9 million. So they've basically agreed to walk away from $2 million in debt owed to them. And at the end of the $3 million payment, we will owe them $6 million more. Um, and uh, that's really the only thing that's going to be outstanding, and I'll, sh I'll tell you why. Uh, so, you know, post the financing, uh, we will owe $22 million to the bondholders, $6 million to Waterton, and essentially uh, no, nothing else to, to anybody, and I'll tell you why. Going down the list, uh, there is another $1 million payment to, water, to Sandstorm. Um, Sandstorm has agreed that in exchange of a $1 million, they basically walk away from the first $7 million. Uh, in exchange of $1 million, and they've also agreed that they are going to walk away from the other seven, and repla we've rep uh, replaced those uh, with, with a gold delivery. So to align, um, you know, the transaction with their business model, which is streaming and, and physical gold, uh, we have agreed to sell uh, Sandstorm, starting with year two, 350 ounces of gold every quarter for a price of $400, which is roughly our cash cost. Uh, okay. the, the net value, the benefit of, uh, <coughs> of that is about $1 million. So Sandstorm will receive in the tune of $1 million from the uh, price difference on gold uh, for about five years. So they are effectively uh, getting, call it $5 million plus $1 million up front. So significant cut from, from where we were before. But that's not really an amount owed to them, right? That's an, that's an arrangement. So uh, effectively, uh, we have wiped out all the Sandstorm debt uh, as a result of that. Uh, we also budget about $2 million to restructure the accounts payable. Because Sandstorm was uh, you know, open to take such a big, call it 50% cut on, on their amounts due, uh, we have had discussions with the other unsecured creditors, and to most extent, they are also taking about 50 cents on a dollar. So there's a $2 million here that will basically clean up the balance sheet and leave us with a clean balance sheet going forward. So if you now look at the company before and after, it's very interesting because before we started Santa Fe, uh, you know, it's 30 plus million in debt and a lot of money required to restart and call it $14 million. After the uh, financing closes, all we're going to be owing is 22 to the bondholder, 6 million to water, so 28. But the same day, we have about $14 million in cash in the bank to restart. So effectively, $14 million net debt that they will restart the mine. I call it 28 because 14 is in cash. So the before and after picture is really dramatic here. Uh, you know, before mm -hmm. 30 plus in debt plus, call it another 14 to restart 44. After a net debt of 14 um, uh, with, with a bunch of cash in the bank to restart. So. Uh, it took us a lot of time to come to these agreements. We have formalized those agreements with all the creditors, the main ones, Sensor and Waterton, and they are available for people to look them up under AK, AK filings for Santa Fe, Gold, and Edgar. So people can actually read those agreements. 
Okay, uh, Catherine, that's really a great deal. Uh, one question to Sandstorm. Um, is this um, deal limited uh, to five years or is this a life of mine deal? Uh, the Sandstorm deal is life of summit mine only. Okay, so okay. Um, this is, uh, we're talking about summit mine that right now today has a mine life of about six years. They get one year holiday, so they all get five years. So it's limited to the upside of summit mine only. Just to give the upside potential to what to sandstorm, we basically say, look guys, if we find more ore here at this mine only, you can keep getting your gold. They needed that, right? Just to align it with their business model. So um, I think that was a fair thing for us, for them to ask, and a fair thing for us to grant them. Uh, but you know, guaranteed, it's only whatever is in the resource right now. After that, if more resources are found in the same mine, uh, we can keep going. But anything beyond the summit mine, which is the upside potential that I mentioned earlier in the district, it's not <coughs> affected by the, the streaming mm -hmm. deal. Okay. Okay. Um, can let you get back? There was, I, th I think there was a map in the presentation. Um, one so of my questions would be, um, if you can give us some more insight on, on the whole area. So are there other sure. producing mines around? Um, are the projects or the properties around owned by, uh, let's say, majors? Or are they owned yeah. by small public companies, by private gold diggers? So what's, how is it looking yeah. there? Sure. Uh, and, um, both assets uh, are located in the state of New Mexico. In New Mexico is really a mining state, a uh, mining friendly state in the US. Um, one of the largest, or uh, probably if not the largest, uh, open pit copper mine in North America is actually in New Mexico. It's about uh, 80 miles from the property. It's called Morensky Mine. Um, and, the, you know, it's uh, the mine that we have is really within the same district. Uh, Within the same district where we are, the, the summit mine, there is about, on the range of about 30 miles, 30 square miles, uh, several dozens uh, of historic mining projects that operated about the 1940s. Um, and uh, there is a lot of data available, both on, on the past production and also potential for exploration. So that's really an exciting area to be in. Um, even the property next door to us has been mineralization, and we are in discussions with the owners about that. So um, yeah. we are very, you know, <coughs> positive on on the upside. Um, it's still blue sky. There is a lot of risk associated with that. Uh, but Brad is actually Brad Cook is a geologist by training, and uh, he himself is very positive about the potential in the area. The, the, uh, the, the other reason project that Sorry. that we own, let me just touch base quickly on that. Uh, Santa Fe also owns two other projects in New Mexico. One is called the Mogollon project, and the other one is the Ortiz project. Those are more of an uh, uh, early stage development projects, and uh, um, we have not done enough due diligence on them to consider them material to to, to the company. Uh, we feel that uh, the potential in the summit mine and the summit district far outweighs the potential presented by those other projects. But uh, Santa Fe has two other projects in, in its portfolio in, in okay. New Mexico. So I, I always like to look at the big picture. So the big picture for yes. me, and of course that's just speculation, could be that you guys are now with the restructuring of the of the debt, um, you guys are in a good situation with the expertise of, of yourself, your team, and Brad, you bring the summit mine back into production, you can produce tax-free up to 80 million, that's a lot of cash, so you can probably consolidate that area. Is that something would, where you guys that's exactly, thought that's about? That's exactly, you know, absolutely. I mean, uh, we, we have absolute plans of consolidating the whole district there, because if you look at the, at the land owners actually in that area, it's essentially uh, mostly controlled by two families, um, and they have the claims from their family, you know, generation and thing. And uh, we have actually met with them. Uh, they are very positive about uh, our involvement. And, uh, you know, they are also looking forward to see a successful mining operation in their backyard, call it, where they can leverage from, right? And uh, yep. uh, those are groups that don't have the power, the financial power to, to do, you know, do mining on their own. But as soon as we get going here with the Summit Mine, um, uh, we, I'm sure we'll get a lot of uh, interest or a solicited interest to, to look at other properties in the area, which we've already uh, actually started. But if you know okay. anything about Endeavor, you know, and Brad Cook, we want to do everything one step at a time. Uh, so the approach here is really start with the summit mine, get to full production, 
get to a solid uh, income um, and revenue and grow from there. Um, yeah. And uh, that's really our plan for Santa Fe yeah. Gold. No, and that's a good approach, but still you need some, some let's say, end goal, yeah, where you want to sure, be. Sure, absolutely. Okay, and that's good. why, you know, I mentioned earlier that as soon as we start production, we are also going to start the drills. Uh, right. So, you know, from the moment we start mining, we are also starting looking for, for more. Uh, Joe? What, what, what is around the cash flow by full production uh, and 400 tons? Uh, what is the cash flow, what do you expect? Right now, uh, based on the six-year mine life at today's prices, after we mm -hmm. service all the debts that the company uh, has currently and a new one that's being going to be incurred, uh, we are going to be left with about $50 million in net profits over the six-year mine life. So it's a very profitable operation uh, because of the fact that over the mine life uh, of six years, we will be producing roughly 180,000 ounces of gold payable. Um, uh, that's... Uh, for any increase in the gold price, let's say $100, you get another $18 million at the bottom line. So very highly leveraged to the gold price. Uh, you know, so mm -hmm. um, again, um, what, what allows us to, to get there is really the grade, uh, which is high for this project and uh, pretty much low cost operation uh, because it's going to be very efficiently run. Uh, the mill itself is fully automated and only requires about six people per shift to run it. So it's a, it's a very efficient um, operation. And the mine, also, because we are going to use the mining <coughs> contractor, uh, the costs are very well capped. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. But uh, let me maybe uh, touch base. This is the resource uh, table that uh, was published uh, 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 about 10 days ago. We expect to publish a 43101 full technical report probably uh, oh. by August the 15th, uh, which is the full technical report. Uh, that was an important step that we needed to, to do to ensure that uh, we are confident within the existing resource so investors could uh, watch for, for a full technical report to be filed on CDR uh, by the middle of August. A uh, quick look at the mine plan. This is just a, an overview of, uh, of the existing summit mine. Um, uh, the blue lines that you see here are all existing developments um, and this is existing tunnels that are already built. Uh, the green uh, lines that you see here is the new development that we will be doing. Uh, what's very interesting is that all the pink uh, blocks that you see here in the model, is this is really all the area that's been mined. Uh, everything else, that's all those shapes that you see there, those are new ore bodies. They have not been touched. So uh, there's very little, call it, mining that has occurred um, in, in this mine, uh, but a lot of development, right? If you look at all those blue lines, those are intensive capital costs to make those development, but the, mi the company has never been able to actually get most, most of the ore out. Um, when the mine stopped in November on the lower uh, right-hand corner here under this front loader, uh, this whole area here represents about six to eight months of ore. It's basically ready to go. Those blue uh, lines are, are the, the declines that are already there. So the plan here, and that's how we can actually start mining within two months, that we start mining in this area here, but at the same time, another crew starts developing the green stops to, uh, to go to, uh, deeper into the, the mine. Yeah. So uh, we are basically ready to mine uh, very shortly here because a lot of development has been already made by the previous team. Unfortunately to them, uh, you know, they have not been able to sustain production. Uh, they've done a lot of development, but never really been able to, man to take the ore out because, you know, they didn't have the right people, they didn't have the right equipment. So, um, uh, and as a result of that, they run into debt and more debt up to the point where they had to shut down. But we are re really in a position to start mining very soon. Okay. Uh, quick look at the mill. Uh, these are a few pictures from the mill side here. The one at the top is an inside view of the mill. The one at the bottom is a call it a print screen from the computer. Everything is mm, uh, automated. Uh, you can control and monitor everything from the click of a mouse button. So the mill itself is in very good shape. Um, on the right-hand side here, you see a picture of the ball mill outside and the, mm -hmm. and the building. There's a lot of capacity, uh, ex additional capacity that's available there. And relatively inexpensively, you can increase the capacity of the mill. Uh, the mill is actually located next to the highway. Um, it's a off-paved road uh, connected to the power grid. 
just outside of a town called Lordsburg in New Mexico. So everybody that works at the mill uh, pretty much lives in the town. Um, so it's a it's a very welcome addition to to the community there because it creates jobs and uh, uh, we are getting a lot of positive feedback from our restart from the community already. Um, How far is 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 the mill from uh, the mine? Uh, the mill is about 50 miles away from the mine, um, mm -hmm. and you know there is a uh, trucking costs associated with bringing the ore to the mill. Uh, this all factored in the in the costs uh, mm -hmm. mentioned earlier. Um, the reason why it's still economical to truck it is because it's a high grade ore. Uh, mm -hmm. So you know the costs associated with tracking still make it a very mm -hmm. profitable operation, um, and uh, we we actually have two kind of products that we we sell. Um, one it's a flux product, uh, which is basically crushed ore uh, that's sold directly to the smelters, um, and uh, the other product it's a, it's a it's a concentrate that's, that's produced through the mill. Um, about 60% of the ore is actually processed through the mill and 40% is sold as flux. So it gets here at the mill, it's crushed and then sold to the smelters. Smelters love it because it has a, a high silica content and they use it for copper um, and they actually pay us for the uh, precious metal content in the, in the ore. So uh, the, the two product feeds actually allow us to, to make a very good um, cash flow from the operation. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, I think I touched earlier on the mm -hmm. on the restart yeah. plan here, uh, and we can just move on from there. But it's really important to remember that uh, before and after picture on the financing situation. Mogion project is the other project that uh, Sandafe has. Uh, we have an option on it. Uh, we need to make a decision on this project by the end of the year. Uh, a significant upside potential, but uh, we will have to see how that fits uh, within our strategic plan of Santafe going forward. Uh, the other project is a uh, project in New Mexico, has uh, over 1 million ounces of gold, it's called the Ortiz Project. A very, very uh, interesting project, uh, but unfortunately, you know, uh, very hard to permit most likely. So we'll have to make a decision whether to keep or maybe sell this project in the future. Could, could you just go one slide back to the other project? Sure. I, actually, so you need to pay, we almost, to pay a, a million, uh, almost a million towards the end of the year. To have to keep that to keep that in good standing, or is that to, to for the option so to acquire? Basically, it? if we pay a million dollar, we have 100 percent of the project. So, um, however, you know, we are in discussions with with the uh, with the owner of the project, and uh, most likely we will be looking to re reschedule that payment. Uh, okay. Uh, it's not within our priorities right now to, to just pay the yeah. million dollar. Mm -hmm. There is a, a better use of a million dollar quality in, in the other projects that we have in in the summit. Especially because area. you said you want to do it. Like like step by step, and this would be a little exactly, bit out of the way. Exactly. So, yeah. th most likely, what's going to happen, we'll try to have discussions to extend those options yeah. to, to the project. And what are the chances? If you if you would would uh, uh, well need to bet, like 50-50? Uh, as far as we know, yeah, exactly. I mean, it's hard to to say for sure, but uh, as far as we know. Um, there is not a line of people <laughs> looking. Yeah, that was. To, to if he does, if Columbus, if Columbus doesn't have an alternative. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah. they, I guess, they're just agreeing to an extension. Exactly, okay. exactly. And, uh, you know, I think still in the mining space, uh, a million bucks goes long ways for a project. So uh, um, I don't think there is a lineup of people wanting to, to take uh. over this project. Uh, but again, okay. uh, it's not a core project to us. So even if that happens, we have a significant upside in a district that uh, uh, we can advance with uh, instead. Uh, quick look at the, um, uh, I'm going to skip over this, so at the management team, uh, for those that don't know, Brad Cook is uh, Hi become, Brad. A, uh, <laughs> <laughs> has become the ch chairman of the board and uh, he's actually the founder and CEO and director of Endeavor Silver uh, and the chairman of and founder of Canark Resource Corp. Uh, very, very uh, successful uh, mining uh, professional, over 36 years experience in the mining industry. Uh, and he's really uh, built a very good track record in, in the space uh, through Endeavor uh, mainly, but uh, everything else he's done is really outstanding in the sector. And uh, we are really um, 
lucky to have him uh, as our chairman and uh, he's actually actively involved in a turnaround of Santa Fe Gold. Uh, yeah. Yes. No, jo uh, yeah, both both Joe and myself, we know Brett uh, personally yeah. and it's always a pleasure to talk to him, get his insights. He's a yeah. very I would almost call him uh, like a British gentleman, yeah. Everything's yeah. like understatement, really calm. Yeah. Exactly the 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 contrarian to to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah. no, but no, really really a good guy. Absolutely, and uh, I think we are, uh, you know, um, really fortunate to have him become the chairman yeah. of the company. And and once he's done that, he's really taken it very seriously, right? It's, he's really full on board and uh, fully behind everything what we are doing today with Santa Fe Gold. So uh, I think it's good to know that he's supporting. Yeah, he's, uh, myself, he's a company uh, builder. You know, there's so many. Builder, uh, yeah, he's really a company builder. One of the few real company builders exactly. out there in Vancouver. Absolutely, and you know he's a self-made, uh, successful businessman. You know, uh, worked very hard uh, during his career, and uh, he has built a tremendous track record in, in the mining yep. space. And uh, uh, through his uh, contacts, I think we can now leverage um, both our relationship with with Euro Pacific Capital and you know other investors that may uh, be interested in participating in the gold bond fund that's being uh, run right now uh, by uh, by Euro Pacific. Um, Capital. Uh, myself, I have over 20 years' experience in the mining, uh, in the business world. Uh, um, about 15 of them actually spent in the mining space, and nine uh, years I spent as a senior mining analyst for a $3 billion uh, investment fund out of Vancouver. In the last six years, I decided to go in the corporate side and as part of a, a few companies. Uh, the first one I work with, uh, we manage, I managed to uh, work with the CEO there and we pulled together a $150 million deal with a Chinese group for a very large uh, zinc project in Canada. Uh, so I had a lot of experience dealing with the uh, Hong Kong markets and, and mainland right. China markets. From there I moved to a silver company uh, which had a mining production in Mexico and another one which didn't quite turn out well in in US, but uh, uh, through that uh, I gained a lot of exposure on the operational right. side, on the mining side. I've been heavy, uh, <coughs> directly involved in, in all the operational uh, aspects of the company and the corporate development of the company. And that's how I got to know Brad, uh, by us both being in the, in the silver space in the last several years. And uh, Brad actually came to me, and I think you know that's a uh, good side note for investors to know why did I join um, Canark. Uh, I had a casual conversation with Brad back in December of last year, and what he has told me, he said, look, Catalin, I think uh, I'm ready to do uh, what I did with Endeavor all over again with Canark now, because, uh, you know, I was so successful with Endeavor, and Canark really is my first company, uh, and I never really had a chance to really have a big breakthrough success with it. You know, we have a great asset in Canada, invested about $30 million during the years, but still, it's years from production, so I want to really... Um, do you know something else with the company? Uh, I really think that now it's the time. 2014 is the time when there are still opportunities available in the mining space. So he's basically told me, why don't you come on board as the CEO of Canark? Uh, you know, you'll have my full support from the board level, uh, and let's try to find the project that fits the model, and uh, we'll do it all over again. So yep. we started that uh, on in January, and uh, you know uh, Santa Fe, as I said before, was our first priority. We ended up walking away from it because they had another transaction. But here we are back at Santa Fe Gold, and uh, back at our first major transaction for Canark. Because if you look at Canark, uh, the, the investment we made in Santa Fe Gold is really creative. Um, for uh, for uh, going a bit more into details, we have exchanged Canark shares versus Santa Fe shares at effectively five cents US for Santa Fe shares. Since we've done that, the stock is up at twenty cents right now. So effectively, Canark's investment in Santa Fe has quadrupled already. Right. Uh, and uh, that's that's shareholder value. That's building shareholder value. And uh, I think you know going back over over the prior. Um, uh, trading. Let me walk you through a slide here because it's really uh, meaningful to what um, I'm talking about right now. Um, this is a three-year look back at the share price per performance of Santa Fe Gold, and you can see here that not long ago the share price of Santa Fe Gold was more, more than a dollar twenty-five. Well, uh, when we announced, when we were working with Santa Fe Gold, they were trading at four, four to five cents. So, of course, you know, we have made a market-based uh, transaction whereby we exchange shares at five cents. 
Since then, you know, as I said before, the shares of Santa Fe are at 20, so four times more than what we paid effectively for the company. And we were wondering why did why did the market uh, react so positively to this? We didn't quite expect it to be that that welcome of a transaction. But when you look back over three years, you can see why you know, the company, even with those challenges that they were faced, they were. Uh, in excess of a dollar twenty five so the fact that uh, the company now has a, a well seasoned management team, a team with a track record, and a very robust plan of turning around the company was welcomed by by investors of Santa Fe. So the chances are you know that as as we get things done, uh, the revaluation of the company should continue to occur, and in turn you know canarch's one third ownership of the company should increase in value and we are basically building value for our Canark shareholders. And uh, Canark right now will focus not only on Santa Fe to get it going, but also on the core project that we have in Canark to bring it to the next phase of development. And, you know, Canark may do at some point another strategic transaction similar to, to, to what we've done here with Santa Fe Gold. So, uh, what's what's, the, are, market cap of, what's the market cap of Canark right now? The market cap of Canark is in the range of $15 million, and uh, if you look at um, um, at our one-third ownership in, in Santa Fe Gold, uh, it's almost two-thirds of our whole market cap. So yep. it's no, there's not uh, factored in yet in, in our share price because it's good reasons why not. The transaction has not closed yet, so the shares have not physically been issued. Uh, we are still working on the financing, so there are risks associated with that. Um, sure. and you know, everything is subject to financing. I think we have a good starting plan and a good plan in place, but uh, there are risks associated with that. So I think, you know, as soon as those are um, done, uh, we should expect um, probably a different uh, valuation for both Canark and Santa Fe going forward. Let me ask another question. If one of your closest old uh, childhood friends comes to you and says, like, hey, big buddy, I have 10 grand left, which I want to invest, would you would you tell him to invest into Santa Fe, or do you would, would you like to tell him to invest into Canark? Uh, that's a very good question because we actually get that question a lot from people. Like, wh which one is a better investment? Is it Santa mm -hmm. Fe Gold or is it Canark? Right? Uh, because of the fact that Canark really is not reflecting any of the Santa Fe value. Um, you know, to be fair with my friend and to be fair with the investor, I would tell them, look. There's still risks on the table. You know, we are working on this financing. Uh, we have a very robust plan here, a very good uh, uh, arrangement in place. Uh, we think we have it. Uh, we have it turned around. But wait until the financing closes. You know, you probably end up paying more for the stock, but you are mm. in in a, in a safer uh, grounds um, at that stage. So, uh, you know, that's probably what I will tell them. I say, look, just watch us. Uh, do whatever you want to do. Uh, as soon as things are really going forward here with the financing clause, then maybe I could say, yeah, if you want 10,000 to put, put it. Um, I think you probably will be, um, you know, uh, making a good decision here. But again, uh, mining it's uh, it's all subject to risks, like uh, <laughs> like 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 you know, always, <laughs> <laughs> right? But all business is subject to risk. Yeah, it's not only Absolutely. mining, yeah? Absolutely. especially and, mining, and but hey. Um. Exactly, and I think you know that's also important to understand that the way that we run, the way I run uh, the company is really it's a business. You know, we have to make profits for our shareholders. We have to be profitable, economical, and after all, you know, being it a mining, being it a manufacturing shoe business, whatever it is, the first thing is you have to run the business, and you, know, you have to know how to do right. that, and then you have to do it with uh, with profits in mind and, and low costs in mind and uh, efficiency in mind, and uh, that's the first thing that makes, I think, any company, especially a mining company, successful, and then you surround yeah. yourself with the people that are very experienced in the space, such as, you know, Brad Cook, and then um, the other person I didn't mention is Gary Biles, who's the chief operating officer of the company, you know, a guy that's right. Uh, got years and years of experience, and uh, you know a new general manager that uh, will be very, um, uh, you know, very experienced. Hopefully, so that's how you make a successful company. Yeah, but right now, all the I think um, in the whole sector, mining sector, resource sector, the valuations of the companies are so ridiculously low. Yeah, Absolutely. all over. If you compare that to um, two guys that that developed an app for Android and or iPhone, and they are taking over over for like five billion. Yeah, so where's the value there? So I just don't get it. So ah, this is why I, myself, I agree. I agree. yeah, we we are mining guys, or we are not mining guys, but we are we are 
investing into resources, yeah, on the physical end, but also, of course, in interesting stories. Uh, Kathleen, one, one, one question. Uh, Michael, do the other one, what is the best, better investment, but, but uh, you, you say it, for Kanak is um, it's really hard that you find out what is the real value of Santa Fe Gold, and you have only shares of the company. So, yes. um, is there a plan in Santa Fe that's everything running smoothly, and maybe in one or two year you uh, um, give to the shareholders a, a dividend? So then Absolutely. you get I mean, Kanak also yeah. get money from yeah. from the Santa Fe. Yes, look, uh, I think, um, you know, it's, it's a bit premature to say yes, definitely. What I can tell you, though, is that we are very uh, mindful and uh, we know that, um, you know, there are very few um, mining stocks that pay a dividend. And those few mining stocks that actually do pay a dividend, they get very good valuations as a result, right? The investors really love them. Um, and... Uh, because of the fact that uh, this is a highly leveraged to the gold price uh, project, uh, if gold really uh, does what we think it's going to do here, move higher over the next few months and years, it's a very real chance that Santa Fe Gold will start paying a dividend. Uh, and you know, once that happens, really, Kanak will start having, uh, call it revenues from uh, or earnings from from those dividends. Yep. Um, but more importantly, uh, one thing that I mentioned earlier, and maybe I want to repeat here, is that. Uh, we have actually checked with the auditors, and because of the fact that um, we have effective control of Santa Fe Gold, so you know while we are one third owner, we are we own the management team, and we have two out of the three board members, and there is also a shareholder agreement between the two, which states that uh, as long as the debt is outstanding, Canark management team should always be nominated by the board as the management of Santa Fe. Uh, because of all those combined, uh, most likely we can actually consolidate our one-third interest in Santa Fe on the Canar balance sheet. So what that does, uh, it will show Canar having actual revenues um, through the one-third <coughs> um, uh, ownership. It's not really cash coming in uh, unless we do a dividend, but uh, from, a, from a balance sheet perspective, that should be much stronger company going mm -hmm. forward. Okay. But, but in the end, you live when you get really cash come in from the Kanak side. Exactly. And, you know, it's, uh, again, it's early to say definitely yes. I can tell you that we have, mm. or I have considered that, and it's probably something uh, realistically possible at some point mm -hmm. here. Yeah, for sure. If you find another big gold mine there exactly. and you need the cash for, for the other one, then it's for sure yeah. you need yeah. the cash for, for the new project. But, uh, okay. and, and it's also for sure it um, depends from the gold price. Yeah, it's clear. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Um, so I'm not sure. Did we already run through the whole presentation? Are there slides yeah, left think, uh, which you I want to touch one on? One thing um, uh, we just finished up with the management team here. Uh, Gary Bias, who I mentioned a few times already, uh, professional engineer, more than 38 years experience. Uh, uh, 16 years he was general manager of four producing mines, so he has hands-on experience. Um, before he joined Canark. Um, he was actually uh, general manager of a very high-grade mine in North America, and Brad grabbed him on board to build New Polaris, which is our asset in Canada, and uh, that never really got to production. So Gary is really eager uh, to get back into production. Lots of experience, and uh, he is now looking uh, to hire a general manager for Santa Fe Gold, who report directly okay. to him, and then Gary reports to myself. <coughs> so that's really the, 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 the team there that's going to run the mine. Uh, those are the two uh, people that we kept from the previous management team. Uh, John White, um, uh, he's now Director of Technical Services, a very good technical guy, um, very very hardworking guy, very good individual. Uh, he's been very uh, helpful for us right now uh, and works closely with Gary and myself uh, to get a new mine plan going and um, get us uh, soon into production. And Curtis Floyd, uh, he is the mill manager there, uh, a bright young fellow, um, uh, poor guy, never really had a chance to run the mill, the mill continuously because the mine never really delivered the work that he needed. But a very, uh, nevertheless, a very experienced and, um, okay. and um, somebody that uh, we decided to keep there. Uh, on top of those, uh, you know, we'll hire more people as we get going here. Catherine, okay. one, one, one last question from my side. Uh, Santa Fe Gold is 
uh, listed on the OTC, I think. Yes. Or uh, yeah. yes. Is there any ideas to create the stock up to uh, a, a real stock exchange? Or Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, look, uh, that's a very good question. I'm glad you, you brought it up, uh, Joe, because uh, Canark, uh, on the contrary, right, it's a full TSX major board listing, and you yeah. have a you know, over-the-counter company here, uh, so it doesn't fit well. Uh, I can tell you for sure that as soon as the financing closes, we have already uh, a plan in place with Euro Pacific Capital to move it to QX in US, which is a more senior exchange. And from there, uh, as the company grows, move it to TSX uh, main board and probably New York Stock Exchange as, as the time goes by and the company grows. Uh, so uh, definitely we, we have a plan in place to move the uh, trading to a more senior platform. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, and um, is this presentation available for download on your website? Yes, so uh, oh, it, is? Okay. it is available for download on the website. Uh, people just go on the Santa Fe Gold Corp website. Uh, it's available there. Uh, people can also listen to the conference call that we <laughs> held about uh, three weeks ago when we announced the transaction. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, if any questions, uh, we are always here to answer them and uh, we welcome people's feedback. Yeah. This is why I didn't find the presentation because I was on the Canark website and it wasn't available there. Yeah, no, it's actually a Santa Fe Gold <laughs> because those, right. uh, even though they are kind of related, they are two different separate. Yeah, right, right. I understand it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Joe, any any final question? No. Okay, so um, Kathleen, thank you very much. That was a really, really good insight. Yeah, on this kind of complicated transaction, yeah. but also um, like where you want to go with both companies. Yeah, um, Canark being the being one of the Having a leverage yeah, with the investment into into Santa Fe, and you right. are going to restructure together with Bradsap, going to restructure Santa Fe, bring it into production. Big picture is uh, consolidating that area, so um, Santa Fe is going to move up to a, a more res respected exchange. So, um, from my end, good luck with the, all your Thank endeavors. You. And um, <laughs> I hope I hope that we can touch base with you again, maybe a little while after the transaction really has closed. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. To that you can give us an update. And um, yeah, in the meantime, uh, I will I will of course inform my readers yeah, about any developments. And um, so it's, the stage is yours for the last famous last words. So sure. What, sure. Look, I think um, you know, I really welcome the discussion with uh, both uh, Michael and uh, Joe here. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. Uh, you know, we've, I think we've known each other for a number of years now, and uh, uh, I like what you guys are doing there. Um, it's always a pleasure to have a chance to tell the story to investors, and uh, uh, I always uh, encourage everyone to just pick up the phone or send us an email. Uh, I tend to take all the calls that uh, that I get and personally apply to to investors' uh, emails um, on a timely manner. So. Uh, it, if at any point uh, you want more information or uh, you want a clarification or you just want to say hello, please feel free to say so. Okay. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Okay, thank Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Thank you.